Painted Words by Aliki. This story, part one. Marianthi knew this day would come. Now that it was here, she didn't know if she would laugh or cry. I won't know anyone, she said again. Most people don't know anyone at a new school, said Mama. I don't understand what they say, said Marianthi. You will look and listen and learn, said Mama. They won't understand me, said Marianta. A body can talk, said Mama. Eyes speak many words, and a smile is a smile in any language. Everything here is so different, said Marianta. Only on the outside, said Mama. Inside, people are the same. I am a little afraid, said Marianka, but not enough to cry. Marianka felt hot and frozen at the same time. She did not understand when the tall teacher said, We are delighted to have you, Marianka. May we call you Mari? But she understood when he bent down and shook her hand. She did not understand when he said, This is our new teammate, Mari. Or when the children said, Good morning, Mari. But she understood when he led her to her own desk and when some of the children smiled and others waved. The tall teacher wrote words on the board. They looked like sticks and chicken feet, humps and moons. Mari could just look. He read from a book. Words changed with his voice. They sounded like sputters and coughs and whispering wind. The words made the children laugh and say, ooh, or oh. Mari could just listen. Suddenly, everyone jumped up and scattered around the room. Some piled blocks into towers, others lumped clay into shapes or threaded pasta. Miss Apichi, Mari heard. Miss Apichi, Miss Apichi, she heard again and again. Each time, the teacher answered, and Mari understood. This was his name. Miss Apichi swept the air with his arm. And again, Mari understood. She went straight to an easel and began to paint. Mari is an artist, said Rachel. High marks for observation, said Miss Apichi. The next day, Mari looked and listened. During creating time, she painted again. Mari is telling us something, said Albert. She is telling us with her paints, said Rachel. There is what more than one way to peel an orange, said Miss Hapichi. And there is more than one way to tell a story. Someday, Mari will be able to tell us with words. Every day when Mari went home, Mama listened and learned. She heard about the many different things that were becoming familiar to Mari. Voice sounds, and counting numbers, and writing those funny sticks that were also in the school books they read. And every day, I draw another picture, Mari told Mama. It's a story about us. I am drawing what I can't talk. Mari told Mama of tall Miss Apichi, of Waisha and Kista and Abi, who smiled and spoke with their eyes and talked about their hands so she could understand. And she told of the other ones. In life, there will always be those who hurt and tease out of ignorance, said Mama. You look and listen, so you will not be one of them. Patik was the worst, 
He snickered and nudged and whispered and shouted dummy whenever he could. Mari could see from his face what dummy meant. That day, she was hurt enough to cry, but she didn't. She painted instead. That day, everyone understood Mari's painting, even Pate. We have a great deal to talk about, said Miss Apichi. Let our ideas begin. Slowly, like clouds lifting, things became clearer. Sticks and chicken feet became letters. Sputters and coughs became words, and the words had meanings. Every day, Mari understood more and more. Miss Apichi became Mr. Petrie. Waisha became Rachel, and Kista became Kristen. Abi became Albert, and Patik became Patrick. One day, Mr. Petrie clipped a heap of paintings to the wall. The time has come for patience to be rewarded, he said. Ready, Mari? Ready, said Mari. She told her story in her new words, page by painted page, as she would read a book. When she finished, the class clapped and cheered. Bravo! More, they shouted. We want more. We shall have more, said Mr. Petrie. I have a strong suspicion that we have here a class of writers, each with a story to tell. I have one, said Kristen. I have one, said Patrick. And we will call our classroom Writers Galore. Mari was so excited, her heart skipped beats as she told Mama. And look at you, Mama, she said. Mama was writing in her book, copying letters into words, into meanings. You have looked and listened and learned well, Mama, said Mari. Soon, you will be writing your own story. And just think what Mr. Petrie will say. Mariantha's Story, Part 2, Spoken Memories. In Mr. Petrie's class, everyone was still. It was life story time, when the students had a chance to tell about themselves so the class could know them better. Today was Mari's turn. There was a road that led to our house in summer, it was dusty and dry as a beetle. When the cold rains came, it flooded, and our feet sank in the clay mud. But when I was born, you could hardly see a path for the wildflowers, and the air smelled sweet. Mama and Papa said it was the happiest day of their lives. Grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, friends, they all dropped what they were doing, they tracked up the path to see me. They pinned good luck charms on me and brought fresh honey and bread. Long life, happy life, they said again and again. The people in our village were so close. They shared the good and the bad like family. During the war, they had mourned together when so many people were killed, even people from our village. They had cried together when my baby brother died in the famine before I was born. The famine had touched everyone. That is why they were so happy to celebrate me. Mama and Papa celebrated everything. My first smile, my first tooth, my first steps. Cousins took me on rides up and down the road. Yanni brought me figs from his tree. Nona stood me on the table in front of everyone to sing the songs that she taught me. Later, when they noticed I was always drawing, Theo brought me paper from the city where he worked. He brought news too, and sometimes even newspapers, though not everyone could read them. The nearest school was two long hours away, and not everyone went. Life was hard. But people tried not to notice. 
This is what you have to do when you are alive, Mama said. You work. We hauled water from the spring. We scrubbed and cooked and shared the chores. We made cheese and bread for each other and helped to plow the fields and harvest the crops. At night under the stars we rested. We laughed and gossiped and told stories that, that the others even listened to mine. We would hear a crunch in the shadows and someone would say, here comes Yanni, or welcome Nona. We recognized each other's footsteps. That's how close we were. Then something wonderful happened. Our twins were born, boys who looked just like the baby we had lost. Mama and Papa cried from happiness and we all celebrated. But now there was more work to do than ever. People were leaving our poor village. They were going to a new land, hoping for a better life. First, the fathers left to work and save until their families could join them. We heard that in the new land, there were schools around every corner and libraries full of books. That is what Mama and Papa wanted for us. That is why Papa decided to go too. When Papa left, it hurt. We missed him so much. I drew pictures about it. Mama said we must be patient and brave. He is alone, but we have each other. Theo was like a papa. His visits cheered us more than the magic he pulled out of his bag. Pencils and paper for my artist, he said. A ball for the twins and sweet soap for my sweet sister. Sweeter this than the soap that we make, Mama said. He read us Papa's letters about the new country, his hard life, and how he missed us. At last, I started at the school far away. Not everyone approved. She is only a girl, said some. Girls don't need books to clean the house. Girls need books to find other worlds, just like boys, said Mama. You will look and learn and listen, Mama told me. Someday, you will be happy that you did. I'm happy already, I said. Every morning before daybreak, our little band of students set off down the dark road, and I sang all the way. I learned to write letters, then words. Soon, I could recognize them in my book. Mama was so proud when I wrote my first letter to Papa, and he wrote back that he couldn't believe his eyes. It made time go faster to write and draw what we were doing in the village. And then the day came, the day of our sad goodbyes. Goodbye to the people and the village that we loved. Goodbye to all the things we knew, the trees, the rocks, the birds. We set off with our bags on the long journey to the land far away where Papa was waiting. The room was quiet when Mari finished, and she was so still. Well, Mari, said Mr. P Petri, we were waiting for you too, and nobody knew it. Welcome to your new life.